What's up to the Tri Media family out there? My name is Charlie. Welcome to another free tutorial video. So today we're going to be creating another shirt design. I'm really excited because I know you guys really liked my last shirt design video. And I want you guys to know that starting every week I'm going to be creating new episodes with a new shirt design. And it's going to be awesome because you guys are going to learn a lot of new things. And you guys get to kind of come along with me and that sounded bad. Wow, that... That sounded bad. Anyway, you guys are going to be able to follow me along when I design and learn new things every single week. So I hope you guys really enjoy this. Um, it's something new, and I've been thinking about doing this for a while. So I just want to thank you guys so much again for subscribing, viewing my videos, uh, sharing with your friends. It means a lot to me. So without further ado, let's jump right into Photoshop and get this tutorial going. All right, everybody. So now that we're in Photoshop here, I want you to go ahead and go to File New, and I want you to open up a 15 by 20 document. So that's inches, 15 inches by 20. And that's going to be your t-shirt canvas size, okay? And you want to make it 300 resolution. If you're doing it specifically for print, uh, make sure it's CMYK color. That's print color, okay? So now that you have your canvas open, you're actually going to do a white canvas. Uh, we're going to end up with this at the end. But this is uh, what I want you to start off with. So white uh, background. So this is my background. Now I want to I encourage you guys to keep folder. So we're going to go ahead and immediately create a new folder. And we're going to name it design. And this is going to be our design for the whole thing. Everything is going to go in this folder. So again, this is our final product. So we're going to be creating this cool octopus style uh, underwater uh, design today. It's going to be a full frontal design. So um, immediately we're going to get our, um, our shape tool, our rectangle tool, and we're going to draw some rectangles. Obviously the first uh, rectangle is going to be a little bit smaller. So the first rectangle is going to be smaller. It's going to be a white background. You're going to add an inner stroke. So go to your effects, add an inner stroke of about 50. Actually, we're going to do a 65 stroke. So mine wasn't white, so what I need to do is go back to my shape uh, tool right here and click white. Choose white on the color palette there. So fix that up real quick make this a little smaller so now what we're gonna do is that we're gonna duplicate this rectangle one it's gonna make a rectangle one copy we're gonna drag that below our rectangle one and we're gonna actually uh, make the width different we're gonna make the width uh, a little bit larger and we're gonna make the height smaller so it's gonna look something like this so now that you have your framework that looks like this we're going to continue on and we're going to cut this uh, corner out. We're going to cut this corner out, this corner, and this corner. So all four corners are going to be cut out. And you're probably wondering, okay, how do I do that, Charlie? So I'll show you right now. I'm going to go ahead and rasterize my layers. So pretty much what's going to happen is we're going to draw these circles on each corner and we're going to cut them out and it's going to follow the stroke that we have on our effects palette on both uh, rectangles. It's going to follow that cut that we make. So go ahead and go to your, uh, your ellipse tool on your shape palette there, you're going to draw circles on each corner. So pretty much uh, copy that, duplicate that. All you do is you right click on the layer and you duplicate. You can right click and duplicate or you can do uh, command J or you can hold an alt and drag. Whatever works, either way. So we're going to drag that over here. Make sure it's centered, command A and then Use your, uh, your centering palette there. So now that we have these, we're going to merge them together because we don't, they don't need to be perfect. So that's what it's going to look like. And now we're going to actually uh, hold in command and we're going to choose, we're going to make a selection out of these. We're going to hide them and we're going to cut it out of each layer, each rectangle layer. And you're going to end up with something like this. Perfect. So you can actually get rid of these now. And uh, now we have our, our frames, and they're all ready to go. And we're going to name this frame. We're going to be making a lot of folders to hold everything in, because you want everything to be organized. Again, everything is about organization. That way, when you open your design back up, you can find it. Easy. So immediately, we're going to go to the dots that are on the sides here um, and get those going. Now, this is very simple. There's a, a couple ways you could do it, but th this is the easiest way. You're just going to um, draw uh, dots right here. We need a different font. I'm going to go to a font called Nevis. You can use Arial. I think that's like a standard font in Photoshop. Um, 
So I'm using a font called Nevis for this particular project, just for these dots though, or periods, whatever you want to call them, doesn't matter. I need to delete some though, I have a little too much. We're going to go ahead and delete a lot of those right now. They also need to be a little bit larger. Um, actually that ended up working out pretty well, so I'm going to keep them this size. Um, so now that you have those in place, um, just to show you what I did, recap, all you do is you draw uh, periods and you go to this uh, T tool here and you can change if it goes horizontal or vertical. So that, that will make you uh, more familiar with that. Um, I rarely use that tool, but for stuff like this, it's really, it's really useful. And again, holding it all, I'm going to drag and duplicate it to the other side. Kind of eye it, make sure it's even. Um, there's ways you can you know you can use your rollers and even it out that way too, but this should be fine. Go ahead and take your uh, your shape tool, go to your ellipse tool, hold and shift, drag your circle out. Simple stuff, guys. This is all stuff you should have down. Um, get it mastered, you know. Work on it and, until you you know it by heart. Um, get very familiar with these tools because they will help you out. I'm gonna make sure everything's centered. That's very important. And now here's the beauty of this. So this shape, we need to make it white first off, but here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna duplicate our settings and our framework because they're the 65 width that we want. We're gonna hold an alt and we're just gonna drag the effects up to our circle. And as you can see, it copied it. That's great, right? And it makes everything very, very easy. Okay, let's drag my, uh, my ellipse tool into my, design tool, uh, into my design folder, create another folder and name this um, center um, circle. Center circles. I had a I had a, a typing problem there, <laughs> and what you're gonna do is you're gonna do a Command J again, and you're gonna uh, hold in Shift, Shift and Alt, and that will that will um, you know you can size it evenly, and we're gonna choose a width that kind of matches the side width, like that looks perfect right there. That looks fine. So now that you have your circle in place, this is perfect. You're almost done. You know, a lot of it's already done, at least. The framework is the most important part of the design. Um, so we're going to go. Whole, uh, we're going to go ahead and select around the first circle here, and you're going to probably guess what we're doing now. So now that we have that selection, we're going to go to our uh, our uh, rectangle marquee tool, and we're going to right click, make that work path. We're going to draw dots, uh, dots or periods around this again. Go to our. Uh, you can go to your um, type palette here, and you can use this tool here. I forgot what it's called, the sh the spacing tool or baseline shift tool. And you're gonna go ahead and uh, draw dots around it. I'm just gonna call them dots. I know they're periods, but and then you can change the spacing with this palette too. This palette is very useful, guys. This character palette, you really need to get familiar with it. It's, it's great. It does a lot of awesome things that make my job a lot easier on Photoshop. So if you don't use it, try to use it. Trust me, it will make your life easier. And you kind of just uh, eye it, you know? Does that look good? That looks fine to me. Now we have our, our uh, framework already set in place. So this is perfect, guys. This is, now we're going to go on to the next uh, step, which is the type. We're gonna put some text in here and bring out the design a little bit more, add more to it, fill it out, whatever you wanna call it. Um, so uh, I put these uh, periods in with the center circle layer because it all goes together, as you can see. And this, uh, these uh, periods can go in with the framework because it belongs to the framework. So as you can see, everything belongs together. And that's what's so awesome about this uh, folder method that I use. It just organizes everything and it makes the designing experience a lot easier for you. So this is going to be um, text or you can name it headers, whatever you want to do. Um, so this is going to be the text. So we're going to go ahead and um, use our outer layer, hold in command and then type uh, or uh, what is it? Um, left click on the thumbnail. <laughs> I had to think about that one for a second. Um, we're going to make a work path. And you're going to go ahead and type around that work path. So you have to wait till you see this little wave. And once you see that wave, you're set to go. You're set to type. Um, so we're going to do under the ocean as our text. I'm using a font called Haymaker, which you can find free online. Um, 
like sites like DA font, I think it's on. So this is another method I use to center my font to make sure everything is uh, centered around this, uh, what is it called, uh, work path. So what we're going to do is we're going to, um, once you have your, your work path, you can see it, and you're also on your text, um, you're going to go ahead and hold in command, and you're going to notice these little dots pop up. And it, when you hover over them, you're going to see these little arrows. So you're going to find them first. I found one of them already. I don't know where the other one is. So we're going to drag it to that line that we just created, like so. And the other one's right under that other, the one that I just dragged to the uh, right. We're going to drag this one to the left. And as you can see, this line um, that I created, this ruler line that I created, those, um, those guides are set on that ruler. So it, it, what it did is it centered this text on top. And that's exactly how you do that. And it's perfect, you know. And then you can also make sure your text align is centered. And this is going to make sure your text is centered around your design. And it's going to make you look professional and cool. I don't know. <laughs> what you could do is you can uh, use the um, baseline shift right here. And you can drag it up. Lower your uh, text size. I'll do 165. That's perfect. So I did my te I made my text 165. Now you're probably thinking, okay, do I have to do the exact same thing below? It's actually easier to do the bottom than it is the top. So now that you have the top all ready to go, the bottom is going to be cake. All you do is you uh, do Command J, uh, copy your uh, text. It's hard for me to design and talk at the same time, so that's why I'm saying uh, a lot because I'm trying to think of what I'm going to say next. Um, um, again, see that? Wow. I do it a lot. Oh, well. What can you do, right? So we're going to take that under text and we're going to change it. We're going to double click on the thumbnail, the T thumbnail, and we're going to type ocean. Just like so. Perfect. All right, so if those uh, if it doesn't let you uh, if it doesn't let you touch the guidelines, the axis guidelines here or the text uh, marquee guidelines, whatever you want to call them, you can actually. All right, so now that you have the uh, ocean typed out, you're gonna go ahead and uh, now that you have ocean typed out, you're gonna uh, hover over the center guide right here or the center dot. I don't really know what to call it. Um, you're going to hover over it. It's going to show left and right arrows. Once you see that, you're going to drag it below. And as you noticed, it's going to uh, it's going to flip it to the bottom. And that's exactly what you want. I'm going to make sure the uh, this x and or this dot and this dot are lined up with my roller, the center roller. And after that, I'm going to go back to my type tool, double click on my ocean text, go to my character palette, and change the baseline shift again. And this time, we're going to go the opposite way. We're going to go negative this time. And we're going to drag it until it's like that. And we can unhide the under text. See that? Perfect. And the spacing is about right. So that's actually perfect. That's what we wanted. Now our framework's in place. Uh, our little decals are in place, which are our dots, our periods. And then our text is in place. So now we can move on and add our octopus to finish this design up.